All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I apologize, um, no excuse, it's getting to be close to the end of the semester, and I may have gone over the about page already because it looks like it's already implemented, but I just will talk about it for a couple minutes. Now, in our textbook, basically the HTML was just adding an ID to our unordered list that we called image list, and setting up on the bottom an H2, with an ID of caption and a um, P tag with an image with an ID of main image. So let's see if I did all that. So this is my about page. So there's my UL with my ID of image list. I set it up, as you can see, as a set of list items. All right. And we have our regular sized ones in here. All right, and our titles, and then below that we've got the thumbnails. So that's what's going to show, and once we click the thumbnails, that's what's going to come up. So you can see I've got the before and after one, two, three, four, okay, because that's how many there were. Again, we've got the ID of caption, and we're going to start it at before and after number one. We've got our paragraph with our main image. And as you can see, again, it's the main image there. All right. And I believe I did absolutely no extra work in here on anything. All right. I think that's all that I put in. So when I run this, there they are. And again, I apologize. I should have had some... CSS in here. But you see it starts out with the first one. If I click on the second one, it changes. If I click on the third one, it changes. If I click on the fourth one, it changes. And you can see before and after four, three, two, and one. Again, this is something in dire need of some um, this is something that's literally in dire need of uh, some CSS. All right. I believe I have nothing for my BMI and I have nothing for my contact page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video because I'm only a couple minutes in. I'm going to grab the BMI that I did earlier and just plop it in so we can see what happens. So I'll be back with that in literally just a couple minutes. All right, again, with the idea of keeping this short and sweet, I found uh, a test that I had done with the BMI calculator, so I copied it in. Again, it is expecting I use some styling, which I haven't put in here. <clears throat> and uh, probably, considering this is a form, it'll look a little better with a couple line breaks in here. But it's a very simple form, height, weight, BMI, and status and it uses the BMI calculator again this is one that we had built in class so if I try to find that and I have it in here someplace this is just stuff that I had previously done all right so the idea is now if we bring this up it looks like this I guess I need some spacing in there too but I can come in here height 72 Weight 111. All right, of course it isn't working. File not found. Well, I'll have to check on that. So, <clears throat> in fact, what line did it say that was on? Main JS line one. Okay. So this is BMI calculator, and it's under my Jim JS. And that's got to become BMI calculator. And uh, again, I'm going to add a couple of BR tags right there. Hopefully, that'll look a little nicer then. There we go. So now I can come in here 72, 111. Okay, and you're underweight. 
I can try 166 and you are optimal weight I can try 200 you are overweight I can try 333 you're obese I can reset the form all right so what you've seen is now I've got my home page working there's my about I have 12 here which is totally working I've got my FAQ page which again doesn't look very nice and since I moved it over I did have the pluses and minuses here but they're gone and uh, my BMI page all right right now the home page is goofed up let's see if I can quickly figure out why that's the case that's why Right, so that'd be from let's quickly open all these and make sure that they're all set up okay so this is the index page so that's fine this is the FAQ page so that should be index and now that one can be this This is the contact page, so that can now be this. Keep that one open for just a minute. So hopefully I've got everything. I don't know if I do or not. This is the BMI page. This one can now be like this. Let's just quickly see if I can iterate between the different pages. Home, good. Yeah, that's working. About, that's working. FAQ, BMI. So the only thing I have not done right now is the contact page. All right. I'm only at seven minutes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop for just a second and drop in the contact page that I had given in class. So I'll be right back with that in just a minute. All right. I think rather than... Uh, giving you because I did come in here and I did add the form and you can see in all its ugliness so I now have home about FAQ BMI and contact with no HTML I'm sorry with no CSS in it this is an exercise I had that I created for my class and you can see I put in social security number first name last name address city state and I grabbed this from a code snippet it's got all 50 states on the District of Columbia zip code cell phone email address desired shift etc if i click right now you can see what i get it tells me all the fields that are required all right and if i start putting stuff in for instance i'm going to come in here and i'm going to put in just a one i'll put in a one for everything And let's just choose one of these. So I'll choose morning, email. Uh, I've got a master's. Password, I'll put in a 1. And confirm, I'll put in a 2. Birth date, I'll just leave alone. All right, so I click Submit. And you can see how it changes. It says the Social Security number must be in, this, in the regular format. All right, boom, I put that in. And now that goes away. First name and last name must be alpha only. All right. Click that. Now those have gone away. Notice since I didn't select a state, it's telling me to select one. So I'll come in here and I'll use Missouri. All right. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say <clears throat> 755 North Par Road, City, Wentzville. All right, zip code. Well, am I still getting those errors? Yes. Zip code, cell phone, and email address. So a zip code, 63385. Cell phone, let's just put in here, 222-2233-4444. And email address, let's put in, hello, oops, at good goodbye.com 
All right, boom. I showed all the stuff in an alert box. Notice that all it all goes away. All right. And I've got a password, I think, what, 10 to 25 characters? Let's make it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. All right. Now the confirm must equal the regular one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Submit. These fields were not mandatory. So I click, and boom, it worked. All right. Now, I didn't send it anywhere. I didn't have it do anything magical. Notice if I click clear, everything clears, except for some reason I didn't clear the password. So I'd have to check that. But let's take a look at, very quickly, at the JavaScript that made this, made this happen. All right, because that's down in validate.js. So that's right here. Again, this is just something I wrote <coughs> in an afternoon, really. So what I do is I assume that everything's valid. So I, that's a, a simple Boolean variable called isValid. This will be any kind of regular expression pattern I want to set up. This is what I basically printed in that uh, alert box that you saw. So I come in here and I do what I call my aliasing, where I set the dollar sign for to alias document.getElementById. Okay? Here are my variables, ssn, where I'm grabbing it, F name, where I'm grabbing it, L name, where I'm grabbing it, address, city, state, and zip, where I'm grabbing them, cell phone and email, where I'm grabbing them. These here, these are the drop downs, and they may or may not even be populated, so I just set them up there. Password and confirm password, I'm grabbing the values. These are all, anytime you see the dot value, I'm just grabbing that literally right off of the the, uh, the text box. And then I called a bunch of validate functions. Since I decided, partly because I ran out of time, that birth date, favorite color, personal website, and credit card number were not, repeat, were not going to be mandatory, I commented those out. But you can see I'm validating every field here, every other field. Social security number, first name, last name, address, city, state, zip, cell phone, email, shift, contact via, education, password, and confirm. All right. I have sent this file, or I believe, at least I believe I did, to Mr. Gudmisted. If he decides he wants to share it with you, fine. So if the social security number is empty, we just put an error in there that says SSN required and set is valid to false. If we get down to here, we know we have a social security number. So I check its pattern, and I want it to be entered as three digits, a hyphen, two digits, a hyphen, and four digits. If you didn't do that, it says it must be in that format. If you get down to here, it was valid. So I made sure there's no error message, and I just add that to my string that I'm going to use later in the alert box. And I do a lot of the same stuff. So I come in here, and for the first name, notice I trimmed it. I do want to make sure you didn't just hit the space bar. If it's empty, first name required. Otherwise, all I'm saying is must be alphabetic between 1 and 50 characters. If it doesn't match that, it says it must be alpha only. If it does get down to here and it does match it, zero out our error message and add this to the string that we're going to use the alert box on later. The validate last name is exactly the same as validate first name instead of First, it's last, so it doesn't really pay to go over that. The address, all that I said in here was if it's empty, because address is a real hard thing to calculate. Sometimes they start with numbers. Sometimes they start with letters. They could have goofy letters in there, depending. So for address and for city, all I basically checked for was to make sure that they weren't empty. Then for state, if it equal, please select your state, I know that a state hadn't been chosen yet. Now, this should never happen where it's equal to nothing, but I put it in there just as a safety check. But if I get down to here, that means I've selected a state. So, so please select your state was not entered. Something else was. If the person is from Missouri, but they put in Alabama, that I really can't control. So again, I zero out the error message and just add it to the string that I'm going to put the alert box in later. 
zip code, I made sure it wasn't empty. So if it got down to here, it was not empty. I said it could be five digits or five digits and optionally a hyphen and four digits. If it didn't match that pattern, I put an error message in there telling them what the pattern was. And again, my, my valid flag was set to false. Otherwise, I zeroed out my error message and added that to the string that, again, later on I was going to use an alert on. Cell phone much the same way, except the pattern's different. So first I check to make sure it's not empty. If it is empty, phone number required. Otherwise, three digits, a dash, three digits, a dash, and four digits. Could have done a little bit more work and allowed the person to put it in in parentheses, but there's so many iterations and variations on there, I decided not to do that. If it didn't match that pattern, give them an error message. If it gets down to here, it did match the pattern. So zero out your error message, and again, add this to the string that I'm going to end up eventually um, putting in an alert box. Email address is a little bit funkier. I, I picked a simple email pattern. In fact, many, many sites like html5pattern.com say you shouldn't even check for email validation because it's so hard, but I did anyway. I, used to, I, I literally keyed in, I googled simple e, uh, regular expression email validation pattern, and this was one of the ones that, I, that was there. Shift, this was a little harder, all right, because with the shift, I believe in here, let's see. The shift was a radio button. So we had to make sure that something, whoops, we had to make sure that something was chosen for the shift. All right. Get down here, sorry about that. So we wanted to make sure something was checked. If nothing was checked, and that was the checks that were put up here, you wanted to put an error message that said shift preference required. Otherwise, we had to grab the one that was checked. Okay, and we added that to the, what we were going to print out later. Now it's different with the contact via, because with radio buttons, only one can be selected, but with a contact via, all right, with the contact via, the difference is you can, you've got check boxes, so multiple can be selected. So I checked here to see what was selected, and I said if nothing was selected, contact via is required. Otherwise, we just added it to our string. Education, again, was very similar to what we had for shift. I used the same code, probably should have written this as a, a function because I repeated a lot of it. All right, password. All I checked for was a length. If the length was less than 10 or greater than 25, I gave them an error. Now, we could have put a lot of checks in here. A lot of times you'll see that there needs to be one capital letter, a special character, etc. I didn't want to do that. And for the confirm, basically I wanted to make sure there was something in there. And if there was, I just compared whatever you typed in with what we put in the password field. If they weren't the same, it gave them an error message. Otherwise, it was accepted. This cleared everything, as you can see. Also set the asterisk back for the error messages. All right. That was pretty much it. So I kind of gave you a mixed bag, in other words. You were able to look if you looked in here, and I purposely did it like this. I really and truly did, setting it up like this with not having anything basically in here, okay? And then putting in the about, the FAQ, the BMI, and the contact. Why? Because this is your project. I wanted you to have your own individual stamp on it. I hope that uh, you got something out of this. Thanks.